see the power we see. I'm telling you right now. That's why we don't see the miracles we see. That's why we don't see the signs we see. Because I'm going to tell you what's going on. It's too much. Too much Hollywood. You want to be Hollywood. You want to look good, but you don't know about being good. You don't know about serving the Lord thy God. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You ready? Because I'm ready. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's the title of that again? Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. I pray that every, I, I wish everybody would come on time and be on time. All right, praise God. So the title of this message, To the World and to God, are we starting, Apostle? Let me know when we starting. All right, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon, and I'm actually in class right now, but this is a dust said the Lord, to the world and to the class. God say, he say, this is my church. And my church is out of church and out of order. You so church till you don't even understand that you are not walking in order. Oh, come on somebody, hallelujah. So God told me to break this thing down, so let me break it down. First of all, there's always a group that want to overthrow. Oh, hallelujah. God said the first group to ever try to overthrow was the one in heaven. He said Satan took one third of his angels. And so I said, God, what are you saying? He said, Deanna, do you think that it happened in one night or one year? Oh, come on, somebody. In order to overthrow, there has to be a process. That means he started whispering long before he did it. Oh, come on, somebody. Well, you know God is not doing it right. Well, well you know that I could do a better job. Well, 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 you know, so the first mistake that the other angels made was they listened to that fool. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't listen to anybody that's trying to make you go against your leadership. Oh, hallelujah. Because if it's out of order, then it's not of God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. How could they, one third, Dang. one third, turn their back on the creator himself? Oh, hallelujah. So come on, somebody. So what God says is that there's an overthrowing spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm going to take you down a little generations. Absalom. David. The King David, oh come on somebody, hallelujah Absalom went against his own father Slept with the concubines And then he said, he got his little group together Because there's always a little group they get together When they're getting ready to overthrow or try to overthrow something And he said, you know what, I think I'm going to overthrow my father And it was so bad that David had to hide in the cave But they had some people that had been with David And they said, David, we love you And then David loved his son so much Until the Bible And also the prophets say that That was his sin and see, He loved his enemies more than um, God, come on somebody, hallelujah It was like David, and I think that was the pitiful Actually right. moment that David Actually became King David Because he realized one thing, hold on God, I gotta serve you no matter who Come against me, God, I gotta serve you No matter what they do, God, I gotta serve You no matter what happened, oh come on Somebody, hallelujah to his name I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody because I don't I like the extra that. distractions, so Praise God, praise God, so what God Was telling me, he said, so what happened Deanna, so I remember when they all went looking for Absalom. What they did is they had a meeting behind David's back. Because you see, you'll have some loyal folks that'll have a meeting and say, guess what? We gotta help out our pastor. We gotta help out our bishop. We gotta help out our apostle. The faithful ones, the faithful few, I like to call them. And they say, we're gonna, we're gonna kill Absalom. Now, I'm gonna tell you, they told David the plan, but what they didn't tell him is that they was gonna kill him. And, and they say, no, because we can't let him live because he's trying to kill David. And he will succeed because he hates his father. Oh, come on, somebody. And if you all know the story, and if you don't know the story, you need to Google it. So what happened is, his hair, he had long locks and they, they cornered him and his locks got caught in the tree and they did that. They killed him. So, let, let, let's rewind, let's forward. So what happened was, when they went to him, they said, your enemy is gone and your kingdom returned. David actually got soft sackcloth and David started being upset and, and, and he cried and, and, his, and his, his sergeant said, hold up. You're crying over your enemy when you got an army that some of them died and fought for you and you crying. He said, now, with all due respect, King David, gird yourself up. Because what I need you to do is go out there and address those men that stood with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere with this tonight. God was saying that's the same thing that's been happening in churches all over America. As a matter of fact, not just in churches, in groups. In this class, in every class, in, I'm telling you what God said. He was very loud about it today. He said, Deanna, there's an overthrow spirit. There's an overtaking spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. 
and it's not of God. God is never okay. going to tell you to get in the church and take somebody's members. God ain't going to tell you stuff like that. As a matter of fact, let's be real honest. God is not going to tell you to overthrow your leader because what God is saying is that's mine, not yours. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why this church is out of order. And when I say this church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. You're out of order because what you're trying to do is overthrow this one and overthrow that one. I can do it better. I can preach better. I can teach better. I can do this. I can do that. And God says it's all foolishness because you have not the spirit of God. And then I look around and I see it. I see so much talent. Oh, come on, somebody. You got talent. I'm talking about you can sing, you can preach, you can teach, and some of you are your doctors now. So you speak so eloquently, and you can really fathom those words. Oh, I mean, they can soothe. But he said that you have no anointing, and you're not loyal. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that's what's going on. And, and hold on. He said, he said, he said it was a process. He said the church is so busy understanding that everybody wants a platform. Everybody wants to be in lead. He said, but nobody want to follow. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, he told me to tell you my, my testimony. When I first started, I always knew I was a prophetess. Amen. At a very young age, to be honest with you. But I knew I didn't know what I was doing. So, you know what they made me do? They made me clean toilets. Oh, come on, somebody. They say, they say prophetess. Clean them toilets. And at first, I was arrogant. I was like, and I heard God say, and clean them good. I was, when I got home, I was like, now nah, God, you know I can prophesy. You know I can do this. What is going on, God? He said, you're training. I said, I don't want to be safe. And clean them toilets. Oh, hallelujah. I cleaned them for almost a year. Then they came back. They said, you want to work in the kitchen? I said, of course. Then they started putting me in the kitchen. Then they say, you want to work with the children? I said, of course. Now, this was years. This one months. The transition. Then they say, do you want to be the youth minister? I said, sure. Oh, I arrived. So I thought. But I was humble and I was training. And I'm going to say something. And I pray that they don't get offended, but I have to. I knew I was more anointed. I knew I could really lead. But I never tried to overthrow them. I never questioned their authority, even though sometimes I knew they were wrong. I went to my God in my room and I, and I cried. I said, God, I, he said, I got this. It's not true. It's, it, it's not up for you to go and do what you think. Then one day it happened where I thought I was grown. And I talked about my pastor like a dog. Oh my. <laughs> and you know there's always got somebody that wants to hear. And I mean, I talked, I talked, I talked. And I said some very ugly and mean and cruel things. And let me tell you what happened two days later. God said, now go tell him everything you said. I said, huh? He said, that's right, and repent to him. I went in front of pastor. And I was so embarrassed because pastor have an entourage. And I was looking, I was like, now this ain't even right. He said, no, you're the one that want to talk. You're the one that want to say things. He said, now that's not right, Deanna. God was teaching me how to follow. So that one day maybe I can lead. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I remember telling him what I said. And he was so hurt. He said, you said that about me? I said, yes, pastor, I did. I said, but I was angry and I was emotional. He said, I forgive you. He said, because it took guts and brave to come up here. Because, you know, he's not going to dismiss his entourage just for me. So everybody had to listen to what I said. Don't think I didn't get backlash. Don't think people didn't talk behind my back. And I cried again and I cried some more. And all I'm saying to you is that there is a process, people. You can be anointed all day long. And I never forget what Pastor said. Pastor said, Deanna, I've always known you had it. He said, but it was your character. He said, your character just didn't match up to your gifting. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I don't care how anointed you are, appointed, or who you think you are. You must know how to treat people. You must walk in integrity. And I'm going to tell you there's always three sides. Oh, you thought there was two sides, huh? Let me tell you the sides that this is from God himself. He said, Deanna, there's your side, there's their side, and he said, there's my side. And he said, to, to be honest with you, y'all are always wrong. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you something tonight because it's getting out of hand. Before you do anything, ask God. If it feels like it's a little wrong, it probably is. Stop disrespecting your leaders, your pastors, your mothers, your fathers, people in general. This is a generation that is rebellious. 
They know everything. You can't tell them nothing. And they love to talk back. Oh, come on, somebody. And then some of them, they'll even get a little violent talk. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God was saying, how we as a church want the outside world to come to church when we're acting like them. So we'll, the church is worldly. I'm talking about, uh, I'm going here tonight, I'm telling you what thus said the Lord. I'm just breaking it down in, in layman's terms. He said, some of y'all like thugs. Well, I'm going to tell them a piece of my mind. Now, just what it is, a piece of your mind, because God didn't say any of that. Because God is not going to tell you to disrespect your leader in front of people. You are a liar before God. Number two, you're not loyal. Yes, you want to lead, learn how to follow, and respect respect let me tell you something my mother used to always say something she said respect is for a dog now she wasn't really calling a person a dog but she would say we would see people on the street she said you better say hello well well he, he just a drunk he just i said you better say hello you better not ever say that again about them or them because you don't know what they've been through and you don't know what you don't know who they are and then when i really would talk to some of them they were ex-doctors ex-lawyers they just had a bad fall oh come on somebody i'm telling you what god said God said it is time for the church to return to back to basics. He said we've made this thing too big. It's all about prosperity. On Facebook, you see, you're going to get blessed. Type amen. You're, that's, that's a lie. I'm going to tell you right now. If you are not walking in the order of God, you are not going to get blessed. You can give about $1,000. You can get $5,000. You can get $10,000. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, I understand if you pay 10% of your tithes, right, then... It, it's, it should come back to you and running over and this and that. But there are still spiritual laws. So what is God saying? God is saying that there's a generation that do not know how to worship Him, do not know how to praise Him, and do not know how to honor Him. And is this not true? Because look at Facebook. You have bishops going against bishops. You have this one going against that one. You have this throwing shade. How to, that's how they call it, shade. Back in the day, what we would do is pick up a phone and say, can I talk to you? Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. God is saying go back to basics. It is time to go back to basics. And as being an apostle, a prophet, and a prophetess, the first thing you learn is order people. Don't. Don't ever, because let me tell you what stops the flow of the anointing. Strife, gossip, anger, malice, and envy. It will stop the flow of the anointing like nobody business. And that's why the Bible says, God blesses a man. You, you, when, when the, I'm sorry, excuse me. When the ways of a man please God, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So it is time to return back to basics. It is time to understand. So what am I saying? The first thing before you call yourself an apostle, a bishop, a prophet, a prophetess, a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, you know what you should first call yourself? A woman of God that loves the Lord and respects himself or herself first because if you do not respect yourself to the one you will not respect others okay now let's address the title everybody wants a title this is something that you earn yes you can have the gift and you can flow in it all day long but it is also attached to integrity character communication loyal do you lie come on somebody that's a big one right there we have more people that lie. I, I, I'm going to be at church. And, uh, then they pick up the phone. But you know, my sister, baby, mama, cousin, father, some kind of lie. And, and y'all think it's funny. When you say something, let it be yay or nay. Quit saying yes so fast. What you should be saying, if somebody asks you a question to be honest with you, let me pray about that. Let me go to God about that. But what you're doing, because you're trying to impress everybody, you know what you say? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And then when, when it gets too big, then you say, or, or, or the assignment is too much for you to handle because you didn't pray about it. Then you wonder why. Let me tell you why I can flow the way I do. Or may I say that God allows me to. The ten steps. I know how to respect people. I know how to say thank you. I really appreciate you. I know how to say you're welcome. Oh, oh we learned that in grade school, right? Exactly. The church don't know it. 
the church don't know. Excuse me, we over talk people. We'll come on somebody. We're very rude. We'll come on somebody. So we have to learn to be more respectful. We don't pray enough. God say the church have stopped praying. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you was really praying, God would tell you, don't say that. Don't do that. You could do that this way. You could do that this way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Start really communing with your God. You say you love God? Then love Him for real. And let me tell you the heart of God. I learned this long time ago. God don't care about your house. I'm not saying he don't care if you have one. I say he don't care about what kind it is. He don't care about what kind of car you drive. God don't care if you live in the suburbs or in the hood. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You know what he care about? Do you obey him? When he tell you to bring this sister something to eat and you know she's hungry. Or when he tell you to give one of those cars away because you got fun. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm all up in. You understand what I'm saying. But you're thinking you're blessed. Let me tell you. The body of Christ have got it so wrong. You're blessed to be a blessing. You think if I have four cars, I need all four cars because I want to floss or, or how y'all say it, shine or, or, or what's the other one? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God said, go back to the basics. Go back to the basics. If you know you have a lot of clothes and you know your sister don't and you ain't got to, thank you, Lord, I hear you. And you ain't got to always broadcast it. Well, you know, I gave this one this and this one that and this one that. And you remember back in the day when when you didn't have when a person didn't have a ride, you say, I'll, I'll pick you up. Quit asking for gas money because if they had gas money, they'll offer you gas money. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God said the church have to go back to the church. I'm talking about the old cloth. What has happened is the new school then came in. And new school, we're going to do that. And, and you done messed up everything. And the old school didn't let you because they, they, they didn't want to lose you. Because the members, let me tell you something. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Why do you think? You think I can't have 50 in the class, 100 in the class, 200? I do things, everything God tell me. Number one, I'm not about money. Yes, we need money to survive, but I care less. Oh, you don't hear me. I am something else. I'm going with God. It is time to start doing things in a godly manner. That's where the church is missing it. We're doing things out of, we're trying to win respect. I see this going on. Everybody want to be a mega pastor. So, so guess what you do? You try to click with the ones that are already famous and, and you try to get their attention and you try to do this and do that. Let me tell you what God told me to do. He said, if I want to connect you with somebody, I'll divinely connect you with somebody. Stop trying to make make connections. That's another thing God told me to tell y'all. Y'all be trying to, you know this one, can, 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 can you hook this up? And, and, and most of the time, it's not what you thought it was, huh? Come on, somebody. But I was getting back to numbers. I'd rather have five faithful people that love God than 5,000 that cause a mess and every Sunday it's going around in the church. And I'm going to tell y'all something too. And that's why God is moving people out the church. Yes, he is. People want to say, no, he's not. Yes, he is. And I'm going to tell you why. If demons are the spirit of the air, the prince of the air, that's what Satan is. So when you go into a church setting, and all those people in there, you don't know what they've been doing. Some of them, they went out Saturday night. They had Sunday. Some of them, they had sex. Some of them preaching in the pulpit and had sex Saturday night. And then they preaching Sunday. Everything, and that's why God said we should give a count. Everything that is in you, every spirit, when you teach or preach, it is spewed out into the atmosphere. Woe unto you, man of God, because you have no right to tame another. And how many are being tainted? And then they wonder why. Oh, I can't, I can't say no name, of course. I could never understand. I was at this church for many years. And I could never understand why married men used to always try to hit on me. And I was like, and, and I mean, one kissed me in front of his wife, one of the and she, and she just looked like she wanted to shoot me. And I was looking at him like, I didn't know what was going on. And I went home that night. And I, I asked God questions. That's another thing. I asked God questions. You ain't got to tell me that. I'm going, I'm going to my father. And I said, God, why? What's going on? God said, Deanna. The anointing trickles down from the head. He said, open your eyes. And one day I saw the pastor, what he was doing. And I'm not lying. I was like, wow. So that's why everybody. And I couldn't understand why the church, I mean, people were getting divorced. And people was messing around. That spirit because of what he was doing. And it broke my heart. And, and I cried. And I, and I said, God, I don't want to be here no more. God said, no, you're going to stay here a little, a little bit more. Because guess what I'm teaching you. And, and another thing. If God got you in a church that ain't right, guess what he told me. So I'm teaching you what not to do. I cried. That church, that church taught me. As a matter of fact, I owe them.
I owe them. I owe them. I owe them. If they want me to preach, they call me. You can catch that in the spirit because I owe y'all. I mean, they were so mean to me and they mistreated me and they did this, but they taught me how to stand. I mean, they were so mean because here it is. They were trying to make me to be very, how can I say that? More of a high class person. And I'm just a country girl. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm clean. I love nice things, but I, I just don't know. And I did it for two months. I ain't gonna lie. They had me dressed up and I was talking. Hello. Hello. My, first of all, my, my thumb was hurting. I was like, God, I can't do this. And actually how it happened, I heard God say, I was in church actually when he said it. So here I am with the diamonds that they put on me and the clothes and everything. And I, and I heard somebody say, you're fake. And I'm looking around like, who said that? How dare they? So when I got home and I'm changing. You know, I asked God, I said, God, I'm going to do said. He said, I did. I said, what you mean, God? He said, Deanna, that's not you. He said, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to stay linked up to these people, and you're trying to get them to accept you. So I don't mind being transparent because that's what y'all need. And I said, I said, God, I didn't know I was doing it. He said, no, you didn't know because you're just trying to be accepted. They know you're gifted. But, you know, I went and brought me a Mercedes Benz. You understand? I was trying to fit. And I'm telling you, I did. I wasn't happy. And so I gave them their diamonds back. I mean, I'm serious. And, and they did it very well. You see, I thought the woman was just trying to be my friend. She told me to come live with her for three months. And, I mean, she made me over, you guys. Diamonds, told me how to dress. Don't walk like that. Don't talk like that. I mean, it was just. And at the end of the day, I thanked her, gave her everything back. And I said, I just want to be who God want me to be. And if y'all don't accept me, and they didn't, because, you know, this was the mega church, and you, you know how you know how it goes. And, and, and it really does go like that. Oh, come on, somebody. If nobody else want to tell y'all, I'm going to tell y'all. It's politics in church. And that's another thing God is tired of. Politics. Politics and clicks. If you were the right one, you'll be on TBN. If you were the right one, you can have a reality show, too. If you were the right one, you can do this. But if you make them mad, all it takes is one person. And it's over. I don't want that kind of pressure anyway. And I still love them. I love them all. They know me. Trust me. All of them know Deanna. Because guess what? I'm known as the rebellious one. Ha <laughs> ha. Praise God. But my father doesn't say that. So what am I saying? Stop be trying to impress people. Stop trying to make things happen. And let them happen. Because let me tell you what God told me. I'm God. Anything I want to get to you, I'm going to get it to you. Anything I want you to be, I'm going to let you be it. Because I made you, not them. And I still love them and respect them and honor them, although they don't do you. What am I saying here? These are general things I'm telling you that the church have forgotten. And now we got a mess. And people are dying out there. They don't want to come to church because they think we're arrogant. They think we're liars. They think we're pretenders. They think we're fake. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, uh, let's just be real. And I wouldn't probably want to go either. It's time to return to where I can look at my sister and say, I love you for real. And not, I can't stand her. Y'all do that and y'all think people can't hear y'all. It is time, church. We don't have a whole lot of time left like y'all think we do. And I'm telling you right now, if we don't change, if we don't repent, if we don't stop it, it is not about money. I'm so sick of that one. Um, yeah, we need money. Come on, you got to pay light bills. You got to do this. You got to do I understand that. I get it. Internet costs. I get it. But quit trying to make people and make that your God. And, and that's another thing. Because if, you, if you're not in a, a, a certain bracket of financial stability, certain people don't want to mess with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God say, stop it. Stop trying to be accepted. Stop trying to manipulate because that's witchcraft. Let go and let God. And if you touch one person a day, let's say you had a, just a normal job and you, let's say you was working at Walmart. You know, if you go around every day, God bless you. God bless you. Let me pray with you. You are doing more than that mega church that's hurting people doing in a lifetime. So what am I saying? Let God use you right where you're at. And I promise you, if you're faithful, the Bible is real. I found that to be true. If you're faithful and little, God would bless you with much. But this is a plea and this is a cry. And I'm telling you, I lie not before God. God said he is so, y'all just don't know God's heart is hurting. Because he loves us. And he said, 
y'all hurting each other. That's what God told me. He said, y'all hurting each other. He says, not like y'all hurting the outside world, y'all hurting each other. So that's the first reason why people don't want to come to church. The second reason is y'all trying to be like the world. There's no, there's no um, difference anymore. You go into a church, you can't even feel the presence of God. Come on, somebody. It's an entertainment. Ooh, they tore it up. Y'all love to say that. Ooh, you, you, girl, they, they turned it out. Turn, are you serious? Where is the anointing of God? Where is the anointing? Because only in the presence of God are people healed and delivered for real, not for play. Well, come on, somebody. Not the ones that fake it. And then y'all love to. No, I hear you, God. That's another thing, too. God says, stop playing with the Holy Spirit. What am I saying? And then y'all fall like, you know, ain't got that power. You know, dog, what ain't got no power. Stop doing that. Because now y'all got little kids doing it. The little kids, before you even get them, ah, And then, that's mocking the Holy Spirit, people. You cannot do that. Stop that. If, a per, if you didn't feel it, now I have felt it. And God told me to explain it to you. How you know it's the Holy Spirit? <laughs> one pastor did it to me, just one, believe it or not. My out of all my years, I didn't even know. I didn't know he had it like that. And and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and say his name because I love him. Pastor Godot, Pastor Philip Godot out of Sacramento, California. I I'm real with you. I wasn't expecting that. I was going up to give a thousand dollars to him, right? I got blessed. And I was like, Pastor, I just need you to pray over my back. My back hurt. And you know, you know, I'm just being nonchalant. Pastor did, oh I did like that. I said, uh oh, I'm going down. <laughs> and I mean, I tried to get up. My legs were like jelly. I heard people talk about it, but I didn't know it was really real, just to be honest with you, because I had never gone out over under the Holy Spirit. I looked around, I didn't know where I was. I tried to get up. My legs were like jelly. I could not get up. I said, this was, this is it. This is what they said. This is what they talked about. My husband, my mama, mama, mama talked about. So it's real. But when it's not real, stop. Just all I'm saying is that, thank you, Lord, I hear you. God is just saying, start time for the church to get real again. Stop with all the shenanigans because y'all do it for money. Y'all do it so that people could say, oh, they healing people over there. And that's another thing, too. Y'all famous prophets, God say, stop staging stuff. I'm not going to say your name because God didn't tell me to say your name. God said you be staging. Yeah, most of y'all. Y'all be staging stuff. Man, how could you? Don't y'all know that's lying on the Holy Spirit? Which is close to blasphemy. But y'all think it's not because y'all want to get that money. Y'all want to get that money. And the sad part is, people know it. But the reason why they, they like you is because anybody, that's another thing. You know, there's anybody they put famous, everybody follow them. Oh, they must be real. I'm going to say something and y'all can get mad if you want to. I'm not saying they didn't love God at one point. But most of the people that are in limelight, they ain't got it, y'all. And I'm not hating. I'm not being ugly. I'm being real. Yes, they have the gift to gap. Yes. They, they, they've, been doing, they've been doing it for 30 or 40 years. Of course, they are gifted at their craft. But I don't see the authentic anointing. And don't play with me because you know what I'm talking about. That anointing that you, you just shake your head and you cry and you know you feel it because thank you, Jesus. And God is trying to, you know, trying. God is raising up a generation right now that's going to walk in that anointing. And you, and you ain't even got to ask him because you'll feel it. It's going to be <sighs> because he say, and this is it. He said, my church. That's another thing. That's not y'all churches. That's not y'all churches. Can somebody write the memo and tell it to everybody? That's not your church. You are an overseer. You are a stewardess or a stutter or whatever. I made up a word. So what? It's not your church. It's God's church. Stop that. Stop that. That's not your people. That's God's people. Stop that one too. I'm telling you, we're in some trouble with God. When some trouble with God, and when it start happening, everybody gonna wanna. You know what they gonna wanna do? Can we get a national prayer? Uh, uh, everybody need to come and pray. I'm telling y'all better pray now before it happened. Cause I'm serious. I see death. I see people falling down dead again. I'm telling you what I see. God is getting angry because God say we don't have much time, and yet we still acting a fool, getting mad at each other. Oh, jealous. That's another thing. Talk to me about. He says so much jealousy. This one jealous of that one gift. This one jealous of that one gift. It doesn't matter. We all fit together. As a body. And we're supposed to work together. Oh come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm done because I, I, I don't. That's another thing too. When the Holy Spirit stop. You should stop. Because everybody know when you go from flesh to spirit. Or spirit to flesh. And some of y'all just be prophet lying after that. And then y'all then y'all wonder why people looking at y'all. Because they're like he just lying or she just lying. <sighs> Alright. God bless you. That was That was the word for today. What God was saying, make sure I got everything. Hold on. Um, thank you. I hear you. 
the last thing. <laughs> you got to walk in love with each other. Even people you don't like. Stop that. And that's another thing. Some y'all don't want to associate with. Some y'all don't. Some, God God didn't do that. Jesus did not do, did do that when he walked the earth. He did not do that at all. And I don't know why we as a church. Some we want to talk to and some we want to. Or, or, or better yet, if they ain't got no money, oh, you know what I'm saying. Or if they got bus shoes, or if they smell you, y'all looking at them all crazy. I, that's the ones I hug. I don't care. I can go take a shower. Y'all gotta. I hope y'all listening. I pray I hope you're listening. Cause it says another thing too. God said this Facebook stuff they they got out of hand too. Y'all do everything. I mean, it's like for a show or for likes or. Oh my God, you guys don't see what has happened. You don't see what the enemy has done? And now he's sitting back laughing at the church like, <laughs> I got them right where I want them. They want attention. They bickering with each other. They fighting. They, they, they trying to get any, just attention, the spirit of attention, getting recognized, doing any and everything. Type amen. We in trouble. We in trouble. As And I say we because guess what? God look at us all, one body of Israel, one body of Christ. And I'm and so we fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and now I'm talking to the world. You know, I'm actually in class right now as well. Our class we fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. I pray that you join us, and we're praying for Israel, we're praying for the nations, we're praying for the world, we're praying for the leaders, we're we're praying for everybody, we're praying for ourselves, praying for each other. It is time to stop and pray for real. Love for real. Walk in love for real. Stop all that hate and that jealousy. Oh my God. Because guess what? What God have assigned you to do, Prophetess Chris Duncan, nobody can do. Apostle T, nobody can do it like you. Because your assignment is for you. Prophetess Kelly, they can, they can try all day long. What God have signed for you since the beginning of time, no one can do it. So with therefore, there should be no jealousy. You know what it should be? Go. Run faster. Be stronger. Or oh, that's another thing. I, I knew you was going to say that. Oh, thank you. God, I'll wait. he don't let you forget nothing. This is the baton. I ordered this for just this purpose. I did it in front of the class, but God, we say, God, bring it back around. Leaders. Old school leaders. Been there since Methuselah. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Don't want to pass the baton to these young, brilliant, poor, I'm talking about powerful, Next generation. God said, pass the baton. Your time is over with. Stop that. Pass the baton. They're stronger. They're faster. You say you wanted it here. Let me pass it to you, Apostle. Run faster. Run stronger. Be greater in Jesus' name. All you guys. That's what we're supposed to do. Pass this baton. But no, let me tell y'all what you want to do. <laughs> and you ain't got no power because then God stripped you of the anointing. So now you got everybody under hostage. Okay, I'm done. The Holy Spirit is done. I'm done. So God bless you all. I love you all. Um, I just got to be obedient. Say what thus said the Lord, everyone. All right. God bless.